Hi everyone, this is Matthew Oates. I'm with Salient Process. I'm the product manager uh, here and I'm really excited to announce to the world uh, in this session our, our Spark Ignition uh, solution for IBM BPM and for BlueWorks Live. Uh, during this session, I'm going to show you live how you can start from nothing uh, but a BlueWorks Live model with some documentation. Uh, you can bring that into IBM BPM and you can uh, immediately get a useful process uh, built within uh, IBM BPM. We're going to pause for questions at that point, uh, and then we're going to uh, extend that process that gets built uh, with business objects or custom UI or, or integrations. So uh, really excited. We're all going to, be, we're going to be able to cover that easily within just an hour. That's how easy this tool is to use. Uh, so that's what we're about to look forward to. Um, real quick, though, just to kind of recap, uh, if you've looked at our website or have heard us speak about Spark Ignition. Just to recap, there's really two primary purposes behind uh, why we created Spark Ignition. Uh, one is when we work with our customers, we often see that they have existing processes or ideas, uh, and there's certain barriers to prevent all of those ideas and all of those processes actually becoming uh, process applications in IBM BPM. We see that some of those things are lost or they're, you're not able to build as much as maybe you wanted to in IBM BPM. Uh, so what we're looking to do is essentially be able to convert as much as possible uh, your ideas, your BlueWorks Live diagrams, your just existing workflow that might not even be documented anywhere, uh, and convert them into process applications quickly uh, that can provide value uh, for your company. Uh, so a second feature uh, that's built into Spark Ignition that kind of makes all of this happen is our ability to automatically generate uh, useful processes based upon BlueWorks Live uh, documentation and BlueWorks Live models. So we're not talking just bringing in just the model and then having to do some custom development. We're actually doing that heavy lifting for you. Uh, and in this demo, uh, you're going to be able to see that. It seems that is, is, are other people able to have uh, have audio. Um, I have one person indicating that the audio has cut out. Um, so if you could hit up the chat to, to make sure that you can hear, that would be very helpful. Audio is restored. All right, excellent. So people can hear me. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to keep going here. And that's, uh, when I do demos, I just like to hop right into it. So that's the last slide we're going to see for a while. Let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at, um, at BlueWorks Live. So let's see here. BlueWorks Live. So, so here we go. Uh, we're looking at BlueWorks Live. This is something you most people should be familiar with. Uh, we have a simple model here. Uh, we have the you know a couple swim lanes, some milestones. Uh, we have activities. After activities, there's certain decisions. So, for example, a review request. This is an example of how one might request the demo of my product team from our sales team. So, the salesperson would make a request. We'd review that request, or I would, and then. Uh, if it's a valid request, I'll go ahead and have somebody do a, do a demo. Um, so you see this information here. You see we could continue to use BlueWorks Live, and there's actually documentation that I'll come back to, and this is how we're going to be able to have a really approachable way uh, to document um, our, uh, our work that we, and, and our instructions that we actually want to have appear in IBM BPM. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and just uh, create this from scratch. I'm going to start by showing uh, here's the process center. If you're familiar with IBM BPM, this presentation kind of assumes you're, you have basic familiarity with, with IBM BPM. This is the process center. Uh, it's a process designer. I'm using the desktop process designer, but uh, you can do um, Spark Ignition in the web process designer as well. I just want to take advantage of the BlueWorks Live subscription, so that's why I'm going to use the process uh, designer or the desktop designer in this case. So I'm going to say, say request a demo for salient. And again, I'm creating this from scratch to show that there's no man behind the curtain here. We are completely starting this from scratch. Um, so we have a process application here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. If, you, if you've used the uh, BlueWorks Live subscription feature before, um, you might be familiar with what I'm about to show, but if not, this might be a little bit new to you. Whenever you have a process app in IBM BPM, there's this feature over here called BlueWorks Live subscription. 
we we really thought this is an, an a uh, an, a relatively unused feature uh, in IBM BPM. I'll show why a little bit here, but uh, we wanted to take advantage of this feature um, and actually uh, use what's created here uh, to generate um, useful process applications. And when I say useful, I'll kind of explain what I mean by that. Um, in case you're curious, you don't have to do this subscription. You can always just export your BPM, BPMN model from um, BlueWorks Live and then import it manually if you want to, but this is a little bit easier, so we're just going to go ahead and do this. So you see it's connected to uh, BlueWorks Live. Uh, I'm selecting a process that I want to subscribe to, and it's going to go ahead and, and establish this subscription. So again, if you're not familiar with what a BlueWorks Live subscription does, what it actually does is just bring in different artifacts. Uh, based upon your BlueWorks Live model. Uh, so here's a process, for example. This is that process that we saw in BlueWorks Live, right? I'm going to go ahead and just uh, expose this to, to everyone to be able to start within my environment. I'm going to take a snapshot here. So I'm just going to call this 1.0.0. And with that, I'm actually done using Process Designer. Um, we're going to come back to it if we want to extend our process to have business objects and custom UI and integrations, but uh, I can go ahead at, the, at this time and actually just shift all of my workflow and all of what I'm doing over to the process portal. So I don't need to use Process Designer anymore to, to get something valuable out of IBM VPN. All right, so here's the process portal. Everyone here should be familiar with the process portal. We'll see on the left, here's our request a demo here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just click this. When I click this, it's going to start a process. Uh, so if we look at the process diagram, it's exactly the same kind of thing that we saw in BlueWorks Live that we just subscribed to in IBM BPM. Um, so it's, uh, here it is. That's nice. Um, we'd love to be able to actually just run this basic process and have it be useful to our, to our company. For example, I would love to be able to just send the make request task to sales team and tell them what they need to do to make a request. And then after that, I just need to send this task to a product manager and tell them what they need to do to review a request. So really basic stuff uh, added to IBM BPM can be incredibly useful for now. Um, here's the, the, the gap that Spark Ignition addresses, though. When I look at make request and I look at when I subscribed, all that actually gets rendered to the user after a subscription is just an OK button. Uh, Spark Ignition changes this in a drastic way. We don't really see much value in just having an OK button uh, here by default. Uh, and so what we do uh, is actually take that process diagram, take the documentation that was brought over from BlueWorks Live, and automatically generate a useful process application. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and do that right now? I've exposed this admin tool uh, for uh, converting a process app uh, and essentially igniting it. Some people like to say we're, we're igniting process apps. I, I guess there's a positive version of igniting. So we're igniting uh, process apps uh, to have really useful information. So we're just selecting. Here's that process that we had. Here's the snapshot that I just took, and I'm going to press this button here. So. At this point, I'm actually uh, being asked for some credentials. That's because as I press OK, um, Spark Ignition is doing heavy lifting. Um, we're developing, uh, we're, we're bringing in the Ignition Toolkit that has all the powerful features that we need to, to have a useful process application. In a bit, you'll see, we'll see we're bringing in the Spark UI Toolkit. So we're actually generating a new version of our process application with some useful toolkits. And then after that, you're going to see that uh, we're going to bring in and, and, and use information from BlueWorks Hive to uh, populate those uh, steps with useful context uh, in each of those steps. Um, people might be curious, actually. Most, I think most people on this call uh, know about the Spark UI Toolkit. The Spark UI Toolkit is the, the UI Toolkit that Salient Process created that last year we teamed up uh, with IBM to actually have IBM build our toolkit and purchase our toolkit and build it into IBM BPM. 
some really exciting announcements coming at Interconnect, and uh, we're targeting to have that incorporation of the Spark UI toolkit done uh, by the end of June this year. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add that toolkit because Ignition requires that toolkit, and then you'll see below. Uh, we're going to have Ignition activities, so essentially we're replacing those default activities with useful activities, uh, and then we're creating Ignition, Ignition templates, and I'll show you what that is. Uh, this last prompt is essentially asking you, uh, do you want to automatically import this new Twix file that we've generated into your environment as the new version of your process app, or do you want to export it? We're going to go ahead and auto import here. All right, so this is taking advantage of the IBM BPM uh, API, if you want to kind of understand what's going on under the covers there. So, and some other work that we've done that's proprietary kind of code that we've created uh, that allows us uh, to essentially automatically generate this. So let's actually just take a look now as to, uh, to what happens. So I'm going to go back to my work tab, and I'm going to start that same process uh, that we had started previously. All right, so right off the bat, you're going to see one thing. We've cleaned up uh, the task name, so we've removed this step there, but that's just uh, uh, minor compared to all the other stuff that, that we've done. Um, just so you know, this is going to take right on this uh, run through on this specific first activity. It's going to take uh, a little bit. That's because when IBM BPM adds new toolkits and new themes, there's some compiling that has to go in the background. So if you're concerned that this is taking a little bit long to load this task, it's just going to be a one-time thing, and you'll see that. But again, just to recap what we've done while we wait here, we've taken BlueWorks Live. Uh, we've subscribed to BlueWorks Live from IBM BPM. We've taken a snapshot, and then we've essentially asked Ignition to say, create a better process application for us. And uh, now once we have this uh, better process application, we're going to see a lot more useful things uh, for this activity uh, that a salesperson might do to make a request. Wait a little bit longer here. <laughs> See, are there any questions in the chat or the Q&A? Nope, I don't see any. If you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat and the Q&A, and uh, we can answer them. All right. Now we're done. We're not going to have to wait uh, that long anymore. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at what we're looking at here. Again, this is a sales manager who, instead of now receiving a task that's an OK button, we just ran a, a, essentially a bot uh, that created a useful process application for us. Uh, so now when a salesperson needs to make a request, uh, they're told specifically what they need to do. So to make a request uh, for a demo, we're telling them uh, they need to share customer information. And they, they need to create an opportunity in a box folder. And optionally, uh, we're, you can provide supporting documentation. Uh, so these are just instructions so that now the, the salesperson knows what they need to do. Uh, you can see that these, were, these top two were indicated as required. Um, so what that means is I could say maybe uh, this one is in progress, but I'm already done with this one. So you'll see progress for uh, the required fields are, are there. Uh, we'll also be able to see, you know, certain actions can take place. So, so for example, this, you're either done with it, uh, you want to cancel your request, or you want to postpone. So, for example, I might postpone uh, this request, and it's going to go back into my, into my queue, uh, and I can open it, you know, up at a later time. Uh, so we're seeing now useful context. And it's, it's in a basic format, but it's useful context to tell somebody what to do. So, for example, if I were to complete this task, um, it's going to move on to the next task. Uh, so let's take a look once we open this ne next task. Uh, we're going to see some differences. Uh, that's because it's a different step in our process that would be assigned to a different person. So for example, now the person that needs to review this request, that's what they're being asked to do. They don't have those other tasks. That's not relevant to, to them. And if we look at the process diagram here, we can actually see that the decision gateways, and uh, we have this needs to be a different decision. After make a request, we were supposed to either cancel, uh, complete, or postpone, but the review request needs to be approve or deny. Uh, so if we go back to uh, our task, 
we're going to see the review request, uh, the actions here are either approve or deny. And the process will actually uh, use that, those specific answers to, to route their flow. Um, there's some other really neat things here. Um, if we take a look, so we can have some task uh, description here. Uh, so a salesperson has just requested this product demo, please approve the request. Um, if we have references here, maybe I want to have a link, let's say, to the IBM homepage. Uh, so these were brought in from BlueWorks Live saying here's some references maybe to external systems that someone might use or reference documents that you might use. Uh, you can even embed videos in a task. So in this task, maybe there's a, some reason why you, why you want to see this video here. Uh, and this can be specific to each activity. Uh, you're also going to notice this make suggestion, this little suggestion thing here. So this, this is a really big feature that we heard from our customers is when they have simple processes like this, uh, quite frequently they might want to change or um, make suggestions or review some wording or maybe quickly, quickly be able to add some links. Uh, so what they can do at various uh, features uh, within this tool is actually make a suggestion. So for example, we need to add a task to this activity. Please add task A, B, C with description X, Y, Z. And you can say this is a, an idea. So this is actually going to go to an admin uh, to, uh, to tell them, hey, with this specific activity, someone su is suggesting that we have a new to-do. Uh, so if I were to say, you know what, I'm done here. I'm going to move forward and uh, say I approve. Uh, we're here. All right, so uh, I, I'm, I'm sure people, I, I, see, um, I see a bunch of people asking uh, what information you set up in BlueWorks Live to know the to-dos. You know, I see information and details. Yeah, so these are all great questions. So let, let's, let's go ahead and, and, and see, okay, well, how was this possible? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up BlueWorks Live. And remember, I mentioned here's the model. We brought that in. Here's the decision. So the decision flow we actually use what was brought in and the labels on the decision uh, route the flow correctly. So there's five particular action items that you can take on any activity. So for example, here we actually detect, all right, this flow said it was deny versus this flow is approved. So that's how we can generate the UI uh, to know on this, uh, uh, sorry, that's how we can generate the gateway logic uh, to know which flow needs to happen. But let's actually look at the documentation. All right, so uh, people are probably familiar with inputs and outputs, and we kind of explored a design where maybe we can use these specific fields. But we found that most customers, uh, th there's such a variation in how customers use these fields that we didn't really think uh, that was the um, most approachable way to take information. We wanted something really approachable, something really simple uh, that business users could do. So we thought, okay, what are the work habits of business users? What do they use today? And we see lots of customers use the documentation uh, tab today. Then we ask, okay, what are the, what's the easiest way for, you, for requirements just to come over in terms of what you want to have display on a screen? And we found that Honestly, just an outline is, is really the best way for people to say, this is what I want to have you know, happen at certain cases. So we actually took that um, type of design and built a really approachable way uh, that our tool uh, can generate these process applications. Uh, so for example, uh, we can have whatever documentation we want up at the top now, so you don't have to change or get rid of anything you already have documented. Um, but below whatever documentation you have, we essentially use just some tags and some really approachable outlines and, and kind of keywords uh, to be able to tell Ignition what needs to be created. So this is that first task. You'll see we say hashtag Ignition Activity. So this is just indicating, um, you know, this is going to be an Ignition Activity. So you want to you want to generate the, this context for, for us if we use the Ignition tool. Say so the name is going to make request. We see submit uh, request information here. Remember that first task? It was complete, cancel, or postpone. Uh, this is how it was able to know that. Um, we saw suggestions were allowed. Uh, remember we saw three to-dos. So we saw one, two, three to-dos. Um, you see that you know, we indicated this was required. Uh, and you're actually going to start seeing here, look at this variation, right? So an ignition to do, or maybe ignition space to do. Or if you want to have, um, you know, indicate a required field by a star or indicate by, by type. Uh, what we did is build in some flexibility because we know business users 
don't want to be, you know, everything kind of fall apart if they miss a, miss a comma. This isn't coding, right? This is some, an approachable way uh, for people to, um, to document information. So we wanted to be flexible. We built in some leniency into the, the bot that kind of looks at this information uh, and generates these things. So you'll see here, this is how we were able to indicate and add a list of to-dos. So I could add, you know, one more to-do here in 15 seconds and, uh, you know, however long it takes me to type this information. And then if I were to, um, you know, bring this into BPM and uh, run Ignition, it would have, you know, uh, four to-dos. Uh, we'll see links. Remember, there were links here. Again, we're, we're flexible with how you want to do these. If you want to have URLs there, I personally love embedded links. I'd rather just say something useful and turn it into a hyperlink. If you've ever exchanged emails with me before, that is definitely uh, what I do. Uh, and so we have it flexible to where you can do that if you want to, or you can have this. The same thing with, with the video here. Uh, so this is the basis uh, for how we can uh, take information from BlueWorks Live, not just the model, but actual requirements that a business user could easily provide and generate something useful. All right, so I'm going to pause here and let's go through and, and see if there's questions. If you have questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat, throw them in Q&A, um, and I will go ahead and, and answer them as, as much as possible. So uh, why don't we start up at the top here. Sorry if I missed it. What information um, as you set up on BlueWorks Live to know to-dos? I believe I just answered that. Is it customizable or we only have this template uh, for all types? So it's customizable in terms of being able to add ignition activities, uh, to-dos, links, videos, uh, and uh, you can actually do documents. I don't have an example here with, with documents, but you can essentially enable documents uh, for, a, for a process so each activity can access um, the, the BPM store here. We have on our roadmap something with the, the ECM store if you wanted to do that, but for now it's just the BPM store. Um, let's see, do we need to have information details need to be captured in Blue Works Live in a specific way? Uh, yeah, specific, I would, I would argue that it's not really too specific. It is lenient, but um, we essentially, and, and we can even do some, we do some spell checking in our bot too. So uh, we did a bunch of trial runs with a bunch of customers and we saw that most customers had no issue following this approach uh, whatsoever. And for example, you could say complete, cancel, postpone, and if you forgot a comma, it doesn't care. It, it knows that these are the options that you want. Um, so it's a communication between BlueWorks Live to PD, uh, unidirectional, I mean, can we modify the BPD design? Um, so, because the reason the engineers found during development. All right, so this is a good question. So um, IBM BPM, uh, actually salient process, we design our products uh, to work with IBM BPM. It's actually a design principle that we follow. So um, if there's a capability uh, that's in IBM BPM, uh, we want to take advantage of that. Um, and so what this does is puts our products in a position where they work just really, really well with customers who, I just want to use IBM BPM, uh, and I don't want to have a bunch of things on top of it that maybe IBM BPM already does. Um, so in this particular case, uh, we, in, in order to go from BlueWorks Live to IBM BPM, we just take advantage of the ways IBM BPM and BlueWorks Live um, provide us. So that's either an export from BlueWorks Live or a subscription. So in that case, it is unidirectional, um, but the proper workflow, if you wanted to have uh, an update from, let's say BlueWorks Live was updated, so there's really two scenarios here that, that you, you'd consider. If BlueWorks Live was updated and you wanted to bring that into a, a new process, um, what you would do is essentially create a, uh, a new process in uh, in, in BlueWorks Live, and then if you import that in, you would import it as a, as a new process in IBM BPM. So it's not going to be able to, to go and, and, and replace or update uh, information. I can show in a bit how we can uh, update, once we've already imported something, how we can easily update that context without needing a new release. Just uh, there's, there's some admin tools that allow you to update that context, but it is unidirectional. Uh, does Ignition create application-specific tables as well and data, data services too? Or is capture information in the process execution only? Um, does application-specific tables as well? No, there's no application-specific tables. There is a persistence mechanism. So you uh, will either, there, there's, there's three options. Uh, there's a local persistence, which is actually built into the Ignition app. That's only going to be for our um, trial and community edition. 
Um, that's so that you don't have to establish an external database. But again, uh, works with IBM as a principle of ours. So if you ask IBM BPM, how would you persist information? Uh, the proper way, especially on BPM on the cloud or other environments, is to establish an external data source. So once you simply set up a data source, uh, I, uh, Spark Ignition actually has all the built-in things you need to, to go ahead and create the schemas for you in, in Oracle, um, SQL Server, and DB2. So, and I can show those admin things in a bit if that's where people want to see uh, later on. But um, that's how we persist information. Uh, data services too, I'm not sure I understand that question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about how you might extend this later on, but I'm not sure about data services. And then as a capture information and the process execution only. Uh, maybe that question is going to be answered when we extend. Um, it does not create, yeah, so Jeff answers, it does not create um, business, uh, custom business objects. That's because IBM BPM already allows you to do business objects, so we're, we're embracing that, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, Okay, is that good? Is it compatible with 857 only or supporting 8562? Uh, right now it's going to be 857. Um, if you have a customer that is, is really, really interested in this, um, we can have conversations around how we might do this with 856, uh, but right now it's only 857. Does it work only for process? Is there an option to ignite hybrid process or case? Um, so it works, as of this very moment, it works with BPD's and Heritage Human Services. I'm going to talk about the roadmap here in a bit. Um, so uh, we'll, we will definitely have full web PD compatibility, so client-side human services and um, processes. Um, no case, though. Um, are you using the internal IBM Lombardi software Java classes to generate the BPD services? In short, what's the next upgrade? Where are the internal classes? We're using the, the API, so we don't have any um, worry about that. Do you have uh, documentation for all of these tabs? Tags, absolutely. A business user isn't going to just uh, miraculously know what to do here, so it's going to be a simple one-page guidance on how to do this. We've ran a whole bunch of tests with business users, and it's, it's super, super approachable, so we're going to be publishing that soon. Um, let's see. What will happen if you change something in BlueWorks Live? You have to import it again. Yeah, I think I already answered that. Is there documentation available with tags? Um, how will this work with Agile as requirements change frequently? I'm going to show you how you can change this information and then how you can extend. Um, do you populate team implementation due date if mentioned in BlueWorks Live? Uh, due date is actually something that's on our um, roadmap. Uh, team implementation, uh, we again look at our principle and we say you can already easily do that um, within the process. So uh, we do not do teams, uh, but due dates are something that's, that is actually pretty straightforward to do. Only useful in the discovery phase. No, it's extendable and adjustable. So um, I'm gonna. This will be the last question I answer and answer, and then I'll go through some some uh, some more demos. But um, Amol brings up a really good point here. Is it only useful in the discovery phase? Uh, Spark Ignition is designed, and we can actually look at this here, and we'll go ahead and, and start doing this. Um, Spark Ignition is designed to embrace IBM BPM data structures, process structures, UI. Okay? And what that does is lets you create something quickly um, that also can be the foundation for actual IBM BPM development. So this is, this is a big deal. It's a big deal to IBMers. We've heard a lot of feedback on this. Um, what we're doing is not adding a layer on top of IBM BPM and just using IBM BPM as, as, some, process, as, as some BPM engine. Um, we're just filling a gap within the BlueWorks Live and IBM BPM ecosystem so that people can continue to use IBM BPM as it's designed. And as IBM BPM evolves, everything that we've built, uh, that you've built quickly using Spark Ignition is the foundation for what you might do to add that additional complexity that you might need to really capture large ROI. It's a huge design principle uh, and, and a huge um, it's, it's a huge deal for us to, to embrace this. And this was successful when we did Spark UI. One of the reasons IBM BPM picked the Spark UI toolkit is because it wasn't some completely new toolkit. It was an extension of the coach framework. So it worked really, really well in that. And actually, I just got off a call, and in, in about a month, uh, we're going to see some really awesome stuff at Interconnect around how that, that um, combining Spark UI with IBM BPM is going. And again, we're, we're looking forward to, to that being done at the end of this uh, at the end of June, and it's going to be fully built into the product. That whole uh, success was really predicated on the fact that we we're designing this to extend IBM BPM in ways that kind of comply with the, how you do things with the product.
All right, so uh, that's enough questions. Can you please uh, shoot over more questions if you, if you have some? But I know people want to see, okay, well, what if I want to have something that's a little bit more um, complex uh, than, than this? So we had conduct a demo here, right? And so if someone was to conduct a demo, it's going to tell them the instructions that maybe they need. But what if I wanted to have more information in the context of this? All right, so to do that, again, we're going to embrace what IBM BPM uh, allows us to do. Uh, so the first thing that I might do is, let's say, uh, for the purposes of a demo, I'm just going to make a dependency on a toolkit which has customer information. So it's a salient customer information toolkit. Um, so if I want to extend an IBM uh, BPM process application that was using Ignition, um, all I have to do is actually uh, take one of the services that's already in Ignition. I'm going to duplicate this service. Actually, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to copy it to my process application here. I will just rename it for convenience sake here. So I'll say request a demo. All right, and now let's uh, let's look at this. And again, I'm using Desktop Process Designer just because I use the subscription subscription feature. You could do this exact same thing in the in, in Web PD as well. Um, so let's look at what we're working with here. So we have a, a coach here. We have postpone. Let's actually look at the coach. All right, so all of those coaches were rendered with a reusable coach view. So this is probably the most powerful part of um, Spark Ignition. Um, Actually, some would argue that the, the bot that generates useful information from the BlueWorks Live import, it might be the most powerful thing. I personally think this coach view is the most powerful thing because what we can use, uh, we can use this coach view to render what I've already shown you, but you also have the ability to add whatever you want um, to this coach view. And we have this little section here. So what I'm going to do um, is maybe bring over a the, the customer section that someone has built for me in the past. So if I want to just display customer information on my you know ignition steps instead of you know just having instructions, I'm going to go ahead and use this. So uh, here's this reusable section. Uh, you can add whatever you want here. Just for the purposes of the demo, I'm going to add something that's going to already pre-built. But um, since this is a coach, you can still add uh, input texts or decimals or other buttons or whatever you want. Um, so that's kind of one half of the equation of, of enhancing activities to have more um, interaction with your users. Uh, another part would be after you do UI, you probably want to have some data flow. Uh, so why don't I just go over here and I'm going to say, you know what, I want customer information to come into this type of uh, coach, uh, human service. And I want customer information to be sent back out when I'm done. So I'm just going to type here customer information. And this is just really straightforward stuff uh, that any uh, business user with the, the aptitude to just map information um, uh, with, this, with this tool could be able to do. Um, so I'm doing this, customer information, uh, and then I'm just going to map this uh, section to here. And again, you're seeing that we're embracing um, what IBM BPM allows us uh, to do today. There's no coding really here. We're just mapping some information. Uh, and we recognize, you know what, there's some other solutions out there that uh, try to uh, abstract this type of activity from from the actual out-of-the-box tools. That's not the approach that we're taking. That's because we want to build something that you can extend the right way in IBM um, BPM development. Um, so we have this information here. Uh, why don't we go ahead and update our process? Uh, so I'm going to go here. Instead of having the default ignition service, I'm going to have this point to my new request the demo ignition service. Um, and then we'll look here, and this is actually a good time to point out, uh, remember I told you IBM BPM or Spark Ignition did some heavy lifting. All right, so Spark Ignition uh, created a variable that lets us keep up with um, the, the result. It, it did some data mapping for us. It obviously it replaced um, these activities with that default service. Uh, the gateways, all of that coding was mapped for us as well. We cleaned up some of the, the subject lines of some of this. And so 
over time, we're going to be adding more and more features that allow um, more and more heavy lifting to, to take place. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and map uh, this step. And I'll just do the first two steps. Uh, just from a time perspective, I could easily just go the same thing here, request uh, a demo. And by the way, if you have ideas on how we can extend this, go ahead and fire them in the chat. I own the, the product roadmap, so if you want to add something added, uh, put them in the chat or the Q&A, and um, it'll be added to our roadmap for sure. All right, so here we go. So we've now extended these two steps um, in less than five minutes to just uh, with, with some more information. So let's go ahead and maybe let's start a new process here. All right, so I'm going to start a new process. Remember the first one that's going to show up here, this was just the default one that had the OK button. Then we enhanced it uh, to have context and instructions here. Now very quickly again, we've enhanced our process to be able to uh, capture data input. And so what we're going to see, it's going to take a little bit, again, because we added that new toolkit. It had a theme in there that we could, could use, so BPM does some stuff in the background. I'm going to go ahead and catch up on some of the questions while we wait for this. Um, who will work with Agile Power as requirements change frequently? Um, I'll talk about how we can change the context here. There's a populate team. We've already got that. What about data field? Does it generate data objects? Yep. So it does generate the data object required for basic usage. Um, but again, we embrace right now the uh, right way to build things in IBM BPM with uh, business objects. Does the business develop in production or start in lower environments? Uh, the business uh, starts in lower environments, but everything that you create in a lower environment is just a one-click uh, import, or sorry, one-click deployment to other environments, including the context. Um, how would you deploy into production? Oh, I, I, think, I guess I just answered that question. All of this context is actually um, added to a, an XML document that can be included in a process application. So when you deploy, everything is bundled together just like you would expect in, in, in IBM BPM. So it's, uh, it's, it, it would, it's bundled and it would propagate up with uh, your deployment. Yep, uh, and Jeff's, that's what Jeff answered. All right, so here we go. So we see this, a similar type of thing, but uh, remember there was an additional part to the ignition coach view. And so this is how that information would come across here. So remember, this was just that coach view, so I could have salient process here, and I could say IBM process transformation, and I could say Matthew Oates, and I could say M. Oates. Uh, at salientprocess.com. Now, please give a demo. All right. So, um, and I, you know, if I wanted to, we we use Box uh, internally at, at Salient Process, so we have this fun little. Um, we can embed Box into IBM BPM, so um, you might see that here. So uh, now we have a more context. Again, this would have been useful if people were just told, you know shoot an email over to somebody or go to our other system and say do this. But now we're actually able to build in more context into IBM BPM. Um, and uh, again, we're, we're doing this in the way that IBM BPM kind of suggests that you build UI and business objects. And um, I think the product has certainly improved and made this easier and easier. And like you saw, it's actually pretty easy to, uh, to be able to enhance these things. So if I review this request, you'll see that we get the same type of task. And now the information comes over. All right, so that's how you could extend a process. Uh, same thing would apply with integrations, right? So BlueWorks Live, you could always indicate that there was a system activity here. So by default, it doesn't map to anything. But again, we're using, I, we're embracing IBM BPM constructs. So we're embracing the BPD, which means um, if I wanted to eventually have this update CRM with feedback, let's say an integration is now available, uh, I could go ahead, once it's been made available, I could go ahead and map that in the right spot within my process. Um, so this is, again, something that um, to actually build the integration, you probably would need technical resources, but to build processes that can consume integrations, uh, we want to make that really easy for people. So you could go ahead and maybe, you know, do that, and then you'd be done with the integration. All right, so that's actually all I wanted to show from a demo. I'm sure people are curious, well, how do you get this um, toolkit? So we're going to talk about uh, that in a bit, but let me see if there's any other questions here. There's a framework email activity, if any, in the BlueWorks Live configuration. 
Uh, is it possible to change customized client-side human service generated this way? For instance, can I add a field or Spark UI CV um, on it? Uh, so I think um, I, I think I just showed that um, the Spark UI coach view itself. We're not recommending people change that now, but you can certainly add things to that bottom section, um, and you could have your own options that that come off after that. Uh, and the client-side human services, uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is all going to be, uh, certainly before Interconnect, um, going to be working with full compatibility with WebPD. And we are already lined up uh, what we need to have once the um, Blue Works Live subscription feature is added to WebPD, uh, we'll be ready to, to use that. All right, so let's talk about, okay, how do people actually get their hands on this toolkit? All right, so uh, there's three ways. Uh, this toolkit is going to be offered as, uh, you could purchase it directly from us. It's a subscription service, so it would be 10 k uh, a year. Um, it's just a regular subscription. We're going to have a limited set of early adopters. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit what that early adopter program is, um, but it's uh, existing IBM BPM users. Um, that are going to help us. Uh, they're going to build some. We're going to build some business cases together that are your real life business cases. And in, in exchange for you uh, doing that work and using the toolkit, you'll be able to get um, Spark Ignition for free for the first year. And then if you buy BPM on cloud uh, or IBM BPM, if you need it on premise, uh, uh, you'll get from Salient. You'll get that uh, free for the first year. Um, so again, like I just talked about. Purchase 10k a year. If you early, if you're an early adopter, it's going to be free for the first year, and then 10k. Um, if uh, same thing, if you buy from Salient, um, do keep in mind that Spark Ignition right now requires Spark UI. So if you're not a Spark Enterprise user, if you haven't purchased that, uh, you will need to pay a separate fee to have the Spark UI toolkit um, because it just requires that to to use. Um, when Spark UI gets built into IBM BPM, hopefully by June, um, we, uh, we're going to easily be able to upgrade. By the way, any Spark UI customer right now, uh, if you're using Spark UI, um, community or enterprise, um, you can, when this gets built into IBM BPM, it's just going to be a dependency upgrade. Um, that's, the, that's the plan right now. Uh, and we just had some good meetings that confirmed that that's going to be the case. Um, Obviously, anything, anything can happen, but I'm 99% uh, I'm confident. Um, the Spark UI toolkit is going to be the easiest toolkit that you can use right now to upgrade to the next-gen uh, coaches in IBM BPM. Uh, but again, you need Spark UI right now, so you'd have to purchase that. Uh, we're also willing to talk about prorating that um, for, for customers if, you, if you're, if you're going to be doing that. All right, I mentioned the early adopter program. Uh, we're going to be releasing that information next week. Um, it's going to be a really simple application. You're just telling us what you want to do with Spark Ignition, an example of uh, your business process, uh, and we'll evaluate all those applications. We already have about six in right now. Um, so we're going to evaluate all of those applications. Uh, we have six customers interested in it. They haven't filled out the application yet because we haven't released it. Um, we're going to release that next week. We'll evaluate all of our customers that are interested in doing this. We're going to pick a few. Um, and then for a certain amount of time, you're going to be able to do customer custom development on your own with Spark Ignition, building out your processes. We'll provide free support and some guidance there. And then at the end, we'll just kind of interview you. We'll get information about what you built. Uh, and then we'll establish that first year free for you. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely reach out to me moats at salientprocess.com. You should have my email and the invites, uh, and you probably will get a, a follow-up uh, to this uh, meeting if, if, you, if you haven't with my, with my email there. Um, and then finally, the roadmap that I talked about. This is some highlights. We have a pretty extensive roadmap that we want to do um, with Spark Ignition. Highlights that are kind of common questions people ask. Um, like I said, we're going to be using the built-in UI toolkit. Our toolkit is the future of IBM BPM, so it's going to be pretty easy for us to migrate all of our solutions to that um, UI toolkit. Um, like I said, we will use the BlueWorks I subscription feature when it's built into Web Process Designer, uh, whenever that becomes available. We will, before Interconnect, though, um, be able to allow you to export BPM in uh, manually from BlueWorks Live, and then import and choose whether or not you want to create client-side human services with the process artifact uh, or heritage human services with the BPD artifact. It's going to be a choice because we know some customers use one or the other, sometimes both. Uh, and again, we're always going to be following this works with IBM design principle. It is uh, a key part of our uh, 
what we want to do, and how we partner with other business partners that maybe want to use our products. All right, so that's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to show. Let's see if there's any questions here. And it looks like we'll be able to save some people some time and, and get 10 more minutes back. Um, so the framework uh, ignites email activity. It does not handle email integrations, but uh, I'm going to add that to our roadmap because that's something that would be pretty cool to be able to have uh, emails go out. And I actually I saw a prototype uh, the other day where we essentially were, um, if you think about this type of model, let me see if I can do this. Um, that's a really neat question, so I'll, I'll talk about it. If you think about, by following this type of, of approach, um, we can do some pretty cool things with this. So let's say you said hashtag ignition email, and you wanted to put what happens in an email. Uh, we can maybe build that into uh, the process and just throw in you know, some, some email service and have an email go out at a specific point. So ooh, I really like that idea. Um, uh, so a, a mole, if, if we implement that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do to give you some kickbacks there. So yeah, for example, maybe if one of these steps is an email, we could say, you know, hashtag email activity, and it could just send out an email. That's really, really cool. Um, good idea. Um, let's see. The, it's possible to change, customize. We already answered that. Okay, early doctor does uh, require permission to use your name and logo. Uh, does it generate PDF docs? Um, does it generate PDF docs? I think it would depend upon the context, uh, but if you wanted us to have a feature, Duane, about generating PDF docs based upon information that was here, uh, we've seen that done before in a different scenario. So yeah, I think that's a really good idea. We're going to add that to our, uh, our roadmap as well. Um, if you had already built some integration services and business object definitions in IBM BPM, could Ignition scripting language be made aware um, so that they can use them in the Blue Works Live diagram? Ooh, that's a really, really good question. Um, yeah, so this uh, decision gateway logic, um, like I said, it uses the um, it uses what the label was to go ahead and do the mapping. Uh, so in Blue Works Live, for instance, if you had different types of uh, essentially outcomes from this that you wanted to map to to something, it uses the actions object, so we'd have to map it to that. But you could imagine having a whole bunch of different options here. Uh, and then if you built a, um, a, a kind of a, a custom input to have more options to just complete approve or deny, uh, we'd already have done the mapping for you. Um, there was a really good question that uh, I think an IBMer asked when we, when we previewed. Um, what about business data, like uh, greater than, you know, if you have some field that's greater than 10 or greater than 100? Uh, so we have started doing some prototyping uh, around using this documentation, uh, again, to, to do, um, like you could actually say ignition business object and define some kind of business object here and then uh, maybe have that as an input. We're... Um, we're going to stick to our principles of working with IBM here, and that's starting to get into the gray area of, well, if IBM BPM already allows you to, to do custom UI and custom business objects, do we really want to replicate that somewhere? But we are exploring that. But um, uh, for now, I, what I can say to answer the question about decisions is we just look at the label and then map tw.action uh, tw.local.action equals whatever that label is for whatever the path is. All right, I don't see assignment of users and roles team. Is it possible in BlueWorks Live and reuse in Ignition? Uh, so uh, when you do a subscription or you import BPM in, we do have um, sales. The sales team is already mapped and it already gets generated here. But I think maybe what your question would be is if I wanted to specify specific people um, to be in a team here. Uh, we don't have that feature yet. Again, kind of our principle is this is really simple to do in IBM BPM, uh, both in Web PD or Desktop PD, and being aware of everyone in your um, uh, Active Directory or something like that is not something that we really wanted to, to do now. If we see that that's an important feature or if we want to partner with a company that wants to do that, um, we'd consider it. But again, we kind of deprioritize things. If IBM BPM already does it, we don't really want to uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, but you're, um, it's certainly something that we could do. All right. Um, 
I think that's all the questions. Uh, so if there's uh, no more questions, we're going to go ahead and uh, stop this call. Um, actually, be sure to check out our um, web page here. So if we go to um, mm, if you go to salientprocess.com slash spark ignition, um, this is kind of our landing page for the moment. We, you've already registered for this event, um, but we're going to have uh, we have a nice 60-second video here. Uh, our YouTube page actually has some videos that you can share um, with your um, colleagues that actually goes over some of how you extend the process or um, generate a useful process uh, there as well. So definitely check that out. Um, but Reach out if you want to join the Early Adopter Program. Uh, we're preparing a whole bunch of stuff for InterConnect. We have a customer that's going to be presenting at InterConnect. Uh, this customer kind of inspired the whole, the whole product along with what our own internal needs are. So be sure to check out the uh, Duzon Bobcat um, presentation. It's not going to get into Spark Ignition, the details, but it's going to be a good customer use case uh, around how you can leverage um, Spark Ignition. Uh, and then we're also working on a, a few more things that are going to be um, uh, a big deal at, at InterConnect. And actually, the last thing I wanted to mention, if you do have customers and you're going to be at InterConnect, um, but you do have customers that might want to see this, if you're a um, IBM business partner on this call, um, please reach out if you want to partner with us. If you're a customer, uh, we're actually going to hear shortly, we'll probably announce this in a, in a week or two, we're going to offer actually building your real processes for you uh, at InterConnect at our booth. So essentially, it's going to be uh, BYOP, bring your own process. Uh, we'll work with you maybe 30 minutes ahead of time on a, on a call to make sure you've prepared your business process in BlueWorks Live with the right type of information. Uh, and then if you come to our booth at InterConnect, uh, we will build the, your process for you in front of you, just like you've seen me do today with this requested demo process. And then we're going to give you the Twix file and the community edition of this. So you can just uh, take it back and, and show people, and then you'll, you'll have all the Twix, and it'll just uh, be able to run. So that's an offer we're going to do. If you do that, you're also going to be able to get a discount um, for uh, Spark Ignition for the first year. Uh, so definitely reach out if you have interest in that and you're going to be at InterConnect. If you're not going to be at InterConnect, I'm pretty sure we'll be flexible enough to, to do that for you as, as, as well. So um, it's kind of our, our nice way to say this is, this is really that easy. We're confident if you have a BlueWorks Live process and you, you put some documentation in a, this really approachable format uh, that we can build you a process application for free. All right, I think that's everyone, everything. So thank you for joining, uh, and definitely reach out if you have any questions. Uh, have a good one.